Jasper Wilkes here. Deep Mysteries. Today, we're going to explore the topic of the emergency telephone system on campus. Now, some of you have possibly seen this telephone system on campus, with the blue flashing lights on top and the digital keypad at the bottom. But most of us, like myself, have yet to solve this mystery. What do they do? What are they for? How do you use them? Let's get to the facts. Now, as you can see, this is one of the emergency telephone poles right here. It has a, a blue light at the top. And then if we continue to look down here towards the digital keypad with a call button and a help button. And if you are blind, there is some braille lettering right here to uh, guide you in your journey. My name is Jasper Wilkes, Deep Mysteries. Just uh, wondering if I could ask you a couple questions. Sure. Um, go ahead and tell the camera your name. My name is Kevin. Now, Kevin, we're trying to solve the mystery of the emergency call boxes, as you can see behind you. I was uh, wondering if you could shed some light on how to use one of those things. Uh, my assumption has always been you uh, press the the, uh, the call button on them. I don't know from there what you would do. Okay. Um... That man had a watermelon on his head. Um, I'm not sure if it's some sort of pagan ritual. It's a Model 530A dual function flashing strobe. That uh, that might be of some use to us later, Terry, to go and put that in your notes. Excuse me, sir. Jasper Wilkes, Deep Mysteries. Wondering if I could ask you a couple questions about these emergency telephone systems. Well, sure you can. Uh, what's your name? Patrick Mello. Patrick Mello. Uh, I, I was just wondering if you could shed some light on these systems, what they're used for, possibly how to use them. Um, I have absolutely no idea, actually. Excuse me, young man. My name's Kai. What do the other buttons do? I have no idea, actually. Excuse me, miss. Deep Mysteries, what's your name? Georgia Cooper. I think they're awesome. I've had to use them. You have? I have. On this campus? On this campus. Really? Mm -hmm. How how do you how do you use use these things? I think you just they tell you a number to dial or like nine or something like that. I got locked out my first quarter with all my books inside CTC, with my ID inside, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I got a hold of emergency or security, and they came and let me in. Jessica, Brock, Jessica and Brock. Okay, now today we're uh, discussing the emergency telephone systems that you uh, see behind Terry, our cameraman, right there. Emergency telephone systems. I didn't even know. Me neither. You didn't know of these these yeah. devices? Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. So up until now, all of our interviews have not yielded the proper answers. So at this point, I will proceed to push random buttons on this device, after which myself and Terry, my cameraman, will escape behind that tree and when the campus safety officer or whoever may be at the end of this line arrives we will ambush them there, there. can you see what's happening Terry? Now we're gonna wait and see what happens. I studied the female female gender for many years. Socrates, Aristotle, Newton, all all of all of the philosophers. In 1983, I was uh, 
Is he, is, is he coming? He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Terry. He's coming. Okay, okay, give me, give me the signal. Give me the signal, Terry. A action, investigative rep 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 reporting. What is it? What? I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he's coming. Oh, give me the signal. When to run it. Come on, come on, Terry. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Jasper Wilkes, Deep Mysteries. Today we're trying to solve the mystery of the emergency telephone system. Can you shed any light at all on these on these devices? I'm sorry, but you have to talk to George Bennett about that. George Bennett, Terry. Let's go. Jasper Wilkes here. Uh, we are here in uh, the office of George Bennett, the interim vice president of student life and mission, and also the director of campus security, if I'm correct. Um, true American hero. George, so glad you could be with us today. No problem. Now, as you know, we are trying to solve the mystery of the emergency telephone system. Now, uh, there's a digital keypad with a red help button in braille for, for the blind and uh, a black button. Uh, why, don't, why don't you go to explain, explain to us how that works there? Well, the, the help phones are just that. They're uh, there for people that need help. And uh, the black button... When you press that, you get a dial tone, and you can use the keypad then to dial any local number as you would on any other uh, campus courtesy phone, say. Um, the red button, on the other hand, is an auto dial feature that dials 911. So if you just push the red button, you'll get the local county emergency dispatch, and they'll be able to help for police or uh, medical emergencies. So say I wanted to call my friend Bobby in a in uh, Dalton, Georgia. Um, I, that's something I could use the black button for? Well, as I said, that would be for local phone calls. Local, um, okay. Yeah. I've got another scenario for you here. What if I was walking in front of Sittner and a stray cat happened to get underneath my feet, as they often do, and uh, fell and uh, scraped my knee up pretty badly? Is that something I would use the red button for? Well, that would be up to you, I guess, whether you're uh, whether it's an emergency or not. If you need medical help, um, yes, that would be what the red button would be for to get medical help. Now, what actually happens? What are the logistics that go into that phone call when you push that button? What happens? Well, first of all, that would energize a solenoid in the pole, and that solenoid would uh, send a signal through the circuit board of the of the uh, system which would trigger the strobe light to come on. When the strobe light comes on, it would send the call out to 911. And uh, through our uh, Harris switch, phone switch, through the 110 blocks in the emergency room uh, service center, where that would go uptown then through a hard line. And as you know, US West, or now CenturyLink, uh, analyzes that call and tries to figure out where to route it, it would then kind of go through the process and through the switch gear downtown and, and you know, before you know it, the dispatcher would be answering and you'd have help on the way then. Oh, oh okay. Uh, okay. Um, well, I... Was, was there any of that that you didn't understand no, or would like me to I've got, got it all 100% oh, right up here in right. my noggin. Um, okay, I, th I think that's, I think that's just about done it. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, once again, George Bennett, Director of Student Lives and uh, Securities. Uh, thank, thanks for joining us today. All right. Thanks for your interest. Looks like we shed some light on this mystery. Until now, my name is Jasper Wilkes. Tune in next time for more Deep Mysteries. Case closed. Go with it down, or Jasper Wilkes here. Jasper Wilkes here. No, that look at that. Just look at that hooligan riding around on that golf cart, all reckless like. Get him on camera. Get him on film, Terry.
We gotta turn this in to the proper authorities. Come here, young man. Come here. Excuse me, sir. You ought to be ashamed of yourself riding around the lawn like that, like like a hooligan. What do you have to say for yourself? I like NASCAR. Come on, Terry. Reminds me of 1942 here when those bombers fly over. Rough times. I wonder what they do in the power plant. I like to imagine that, uh, there's just a whole bunch of people in there taking a, taking a nice steam bath together in a large, large heated swimming pool. I oh, wish I could be one of them. John O'Pratt, our next president.